What you have is a list of excuses here. Um, you should have been dealing with this car parking months ago rather than just coming up with the one solution to get into Quake Park. And this is the same thing that happened with security last year. Um, and also what they're saying on charges is utterly misleading. The charge at Dublin Airport on a per- the parking passenger at the moment for this summer is €20.81, Euros and 81, not €8 Euros that Kenny's talking about, or eight fifty. What he's conveniently doing is splitting the charges between arriving and the parking passengers. Nothing that any other airport in Europe does. You put the charges in on a departing, uh, on a, on a uh, per passenger basis on a departing basis and that's so our average for departing uh, passengers in our accounts is seven euros and Dublin is three times that and there is no incentive for growth or otherwise here at Dublin so the average across Europe seven euro they're the airports you deal with and that's, in, is, that's in our accounts and you'll see it in the investor presentation and actually that seven euros is overstated because it includes handling in Dublin you, ha- you do your own handling I mean, 21 plus yeah. What would be the ideal charge that you would be paying in Dublin? Do you want to get it back to towards that seven I think I think what we've got to get here is that look look what happened post COVID. In the, uh, the government put in the um, the traffic recovery scheme, if you remember, and we responded to that uh, and recovered to a hundred and twenty percent in the first year. Okay, so, I I mean, regardless of the quantum of the discount, Ryanair responds to incentives and puts traffic in. So, at the moment, uh, Spanish airport charges are uh, frozen until uh, 2027. Most of the Italian airports have done um, um, uh, uh, growth-related deals with us. Um, and have rewarded us for putting in the Game Changer aircraft. The same thing at our major hubs in Stansted, Bergamo, um, you know, Charleroi, where we've got long-term, in some cases, 10-year deals, and they're based on uh, growth incentives. So the more you put in, the lower the charges are, given that most of the costs at airports are fixed costs. So they haven't done... Um, so what at Dublin, they just lazily say, oh, we have to go to the regulator, and then the regulator sets the charges, and it's not us. The, the only reason we have a regulatory environment I mean, um, is because uh, they have a monopoly. Um, and that monopoly at Dublin Airport, there's no other airports in the Dublin area that I know of, um, and they set the charges, and, and the charges this year have already gone up by um, 11, 12. And they're set to rise by 45% by 2026. So Dublin is going to lose out because airlines that have capacity, namely Ryanair, growing, is going to, is is most likely to put those in other airports in Europe where it can get a better return. Eddie, you effectively own Dublin at this stage. You have 34 aircraft there. So are you seeking a deal that will keep that level of capacity or put extra capacity in? And what's the sort of deal you'd be looking for to? To actually, it, 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 what you say is that do you want to grow to 35, 36, 37, 40 aircraft over and you know and have more destinations, more frequency? Uh, it's an island nation. Look at what we're doing. Like look at the success that we've had with you know Europe's largest airline being incorporated in Ireland and in its own backyard. I mean, like it is a beacon for what can. Uh, 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 like that other parts of Europe look on in envy because it was our backyard and where we started like we had we had ups and downs with it but nevertheless it's where we started and they look on and, and envy and say look at the connectivity that a city or a metropolitan area of 1.7 million can have and why can't we have that in you know in parts of Italy or Spain or I was in Albania yesterday I was in Calabria the day before and you know they want Ryanair If the charges go up will you reduce capacity at Dublin? We're already planning to take out the game changer aircraft out of uh, Dublin this uh, winter because the um, there is no uh, incentive on charges this winter and there are other airports that have got noise issues that are only too delighted to take aircraft that have got 40% less noise emissions and are incentivizing us to do that. If it's frozen at the current uh, uh, level is that good enough for Ryanair or will you be looking for more from Dublin Airport Authority? Yeah I mean we, we, no, what we would look at is if we can get a better return elsewhere um, and particularly this winter when you're loss making during the winter well then I'm more likely to relocate aircraft but at a, an absolute minimum I don't see any reason why I should leave the aircraft that are the most fuel efficient and environmentally friendly at Dublin Airport if they're not going to incentivize us to do that and if there are other airports saying we need that then I'm, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change those aircraft to those locations. Is the third terminal becoming a crunch point now between DAA and Ryanair as well? 
Well, like I say, they've no plan. They've no plan to extend the gates on Terminal One, and they want to build a tunnel to a place where they say they don't want to put a third terminal. It doesn't make any sense. Like, yeah, why did they build a big tunnel over there? Like, there's nothing over that side except the IAA tower and a couple of fire training aircraft. I mean, Kenny was on this morning talking about they need to bring baggage over. You don't need to bring baggage. There's no aircraft over there. If somebody's building the equivalent of a four-lane tunnel, which is the same size as the port tunnel under a runway, to go to the IAA offices, I suspect, you know, they, they might have other plans. Charge, you're, you're looking for, for a, a freeze on that for three or four years. Is that really we, going to get we, you we over the line on be, it? We want it to be reduced. I mean, it is three, it, as it stands currently today, it has been increased by 12% this summer already. To 20, I'll give you the exact amount so you can ask the DAA. It's 20 euros 81. Okay, so it's just short of 21 euros. For a, on a per departing passenger basis. Where does it rank in the highest airport charges you deal with? Because I know you've pulled out of Frankfurt over this issue. Uh, out of Frankfurt and Zaventon. If you look at it, like an average is, there's as many above it as there are below it, right? And in that seven euros, like the Dublin 21 euros is in there as well, along with our own handling. Yeah. And what we're saying is, for, for you know, Dublin is not Frankfurt, you know, and, uh, and it's not Munich. And it's certainly not Amsterdam, right? So it still needs to compete and look at who is the largest customer at Dublin Airport. It's the one customer that looks at the largest variable cost, which is airport cost, and they're going the wrong way for Ryanair, and they're going the wrong way for Ireland.